back to the podcast. Wait. I am your host, um, Mr. Madeover. Wait. This is my on her phone. Cause I'm trying to tag. I'm like co-host, Mrs. Madeover. Yo. Or me, sis, me. Oh. oh uh, um. We want to thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> uh, first of all, we want to say. <laughs> Was that you trying to do me? I nailed it. What you talking about? <laughs> I don't think you did. I can pull clips just to say that I nailed that one. <sighs> okay. I'm not fire. You may be um, more. But, um. Because <laughs> that's your opening. That's your. I am. No. I am. This is my opening. Yeah, that's what it is. I know these things. I watch the videos all the time. I listen to the podcast myself. You, you do. Know, um, hey, y'all. I'm an active <laughs> host and an active listener and an active watcher. You are. Um, <laughs> Did you want gifts, honey? Yeah, I want gifts. Yeah. You asked me for gifts. You said what a gift set. <laughs> no. Nah. Where are the gifts? So it's the it has been. Well, you're out. Well, you're out of school now, right? Yes, um, honey, I'm out. How the kids do? How did the kids do in their grades? <laughs> Why you do that? <laughs> that's just the question. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about this one class because that's my class that I'm very very proud of. Listen up, uh, class. All right. So y'all know who y'all are. There are 22 Fs. Like 22 F's And there are only 27 kids in the classroom And I had a meltdown Wow Because it was 22 kids failing And I didn't know what to do I had a meltdown and then I melt, I had a meltdown in class But then I went and I told on myself Cause you know I, I was upset I mean I wasn't fussing but I was like Like I cried In front of the class And um, I went I went to my, my person. My person is, is our counselor. After I cried in the classroom and I got myself together, I made it down to the office to talk to the counselor. And I was like... Well, I almost said her name. <laughs> That's what's up. Well, I mean, I guess we could. No, I no we to. can't. No, okay. she got warrants. Okay. So, and then, like, I was like... Sorry. I was like, I just worked out in front of glass. Like, it really broke down. And then I started crying again. I was like, can you get the assistant principal? So then, like, we kind of had a powwow. And then I kind of just told them what my frustration was and what I had been doing to try to help the students. And so um, it was kind of met with reinforcement. And, you know, like, if I didn't have a heart and if I didn't care, then I wouldn't be up there emotional about it. Nah, it would just be like, whatever. Like F here and F here. Yeah, everybody get F. You get F, you get F. Everybody get Fs. But that's not me, um, especially when I know the potential of my kids. Yeah. Um, and so we, um, my, um, my girl, <laughs> G, <laughs> she, uh, she held it down she um she held it down with me and we made phone calls to parents trying to get students this last hurrah our students worked very very hard um and making up their work so by the time we finished out we had reached every child um to help them as far as makeup work except for two of them uh, and one of them i'm gonna have to call i gotta call her tomorrow just to make sure um, but we were able to talk to everybody and get everybody to where they were at least passing. And the crazy part was this is all twenty two students. The, yeah, this was the yeah the twenty two like it it was dwindling down. So like we went from twenty two to like fourteen, and then like eleven, and then like a kid his schedule got changed, and so he had me in the morning, and um. I was able to help him like so just the additional time that they put in and then we put in um and helping them to do great recovery we call it great recovery great recovery so i was very very proud of that class because they worked hard and that is um that's, good stuff. that's my class that you know 
they showed the biggest improvement. I even had a child, um, he know who he is. He logged in in the car. He was on the car. He was on his mom's, uh, what do you call it? The hot spot in the car doing oh, work trying. on Zoom. And so I was like, you know, the mom talking to me. Thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, allowing him. And I'm like, Psh. Now, kids, listen. If we can put this effort in at the beginning of the semester. Yeah, it'll be so much easier. It'll end. make life a whole lot easier. Yeah. Like, trying to tell you. Like, you won't have to go through this rush. And right. Your mom saying you won't get this for Christmas. Yeah. Because I know that threat has Yeah, happened. that's, um, yeah. I made that threat. I'm going to take that back. Um, You mm-hmm. will not get this. Yeah. And, yeah. A lot of, and a lot of the parents, their frustration was, what do I do? Um, cause it wasn't like the, the assignments weren't open the whole nine weeks. So, um, Yo, I'm extending some things. Open the assignments? No, they stay open. They don't close. Uh, that's what's up. We use, uh, I use Google Classroom via Canvas. And so it links off. Mm. Um, and so it, it has deadlines, but it does not like close the assignment. So they don't have to ask me to open. They just go in and do it. Um, so yeah but it ended out really good um my babies they took care of me um i got gifts <laughs> where the gifts at he gets he gets all the candy i oh, know don't let it, give me no gifts though he got the candy oh, yeah. um but yeah they took care Talk of me these kids parents. and then i got some that stayed home because what we what happened was we had an extra day and a half and so some kids stayed home and so i had some kids you know chatting me on zoom like i'm gonna bring you your gift when I come to school, when we come back, and I'm like, baby, you're good. But they did the ones that they they did good. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's, that's always good to hear. You know, started off bad, yeah. Which means y'all, in conclusion, was not a good conclusion. Yeah, the beginning of your conclusion. So, listen, kids, get that work done. Yeah, it just makes life easier you know, for everybody. Take the pressure off your parents and uh Me. You know. It's my first time hearing about her in the office crying. But I uh, told you I cried. I told you I texted you and told you I said meltdown. It's my first time hearing the full extent of the whole thing. But I texted you. But at the end of the day it is what it is. I texted you the whole scenario. <laughs> it is what it is. But we are looking forward to uh, this this hot. Am I looking? I don't You're know not. if I'm looking. It's not that I'm not looking forward to it. I want nobody to think that he is such a Grinch. Um, He's a mean one, Mister Grinch. I just I'm focused. Like as as the young people would say, I'm woke. I don't know what they got with this third eye. They say, you know, keep that third eye, whatever. But I'm just like when I tell you, I'm, 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 I'm focused, focused, I'm focused, man. Like I was this like, Christmas what? is awesome, and, and you know, I know that, that it's a trying one for a lot of people. First right. off, you know, I'm first of all feeling feeling that in the atmosphere, and and I'm sensitive to it, right, and. I'm trying to be at a point where not too much of a, uh, I want to say Debbie, because that's a woman's name. Donald Downer. I don't want to be a Donald Downer. Um, But I'm so focused on the future. When I tell y'all, COVID has shown me a different um, way of thinking. And I don't want to take the same mindset into two, 2021 mm-hmm. you know and beyond you know right. but i think i think what's going on with you is you're focused on the future and then allowing me to focus on making sure that everything seems normal for the kids i think that's how i look at it is creating a sense of normalcy for the children but then like your focus is you're you're basically leading us and then with this with this break though creating the sense of normalcy isn't just allowing them to be excited about christmas and allowing them to be excited about the lights because that's what we all like me and the girls we we love um or the girls and i sorry um the girls and i we love uh christmas lights and so every time they send they're like oh 
Wow, that's so beautiful, Mommy. I wish we could have lights like that. Until next year. <laughs> so so but, I got a plan for that, too? Yeah, so right. I think it's for... I think what's going on is, is I'm as... I guess as the nurturer, I'm trying to create that sense of normalcy because they have not been able to do anything or go anywhere or or really hang out with people. Um, And then they haven't even been in school. So they haven't even really been around people uh, or peers. So creating the sense of normalcy um, for me being off work is is the plan um, as I move forward and watch what moves you're making as well so that I'm following you. Yeah, you better buckle up then. Oh. <laughs> but today's podcast title What a gift set. What a, what a, is where the gift set. set. What a, honestly, what, that's just what, basically what, what it's about. What a gifts. What a gifts. So what a gifts. What a gifts. Hey, what a gifts. Hey, the gifts all over our house. <laughs> I'm talking about the actual gifts. No, I'm just playing. I'm t- I know what you're talking <laughs> Told you I'm focused. So I can't even put <laughs> All right, then. I guess I better get prim and proper because, you know, the way things are going right now. <laughs> Focus. So. I've been sitting on this for a while, too. And, um. Okay, let's talk. Something's been dealing with me about it. But can we talk about where the where the whole thing of where the, where we got where the gifts? From missionary, uh, <laughs> our, our daughter. You can't break it down. <laughs> Okay, so um, Araya was what, like three, maybe, like three, and um, it was Thanksgiving time, and um, we had spent the night with um, yeah. some extended family. Our people, people. <laughs> Our so, people. so Raya woke up. You know, because she thought it was Christmas. So she woke up and the first thing she said, Grandma, what a gift set. (laughs) So the running um, thing every holiday starting like around Thanksgiving is what a gift set. Because that was literally what she did. Yeah, she was. She was three. And it was so hilarious because she knew she was excited, and she's always been excited about Christmas. So she, she knew she gets excited about gifts. Period. Yeah, she loves gifts. Period. And then she loves this time of year, and so she's in. She's now in the age of, mommy. Do we celebrate this holiday, or do we celebrate? Because I'm trying to teach her like the holidays that we do celebrate. The ones we don't celebrate, but they're teaching them about in school, which I think, you know, learning about different different cultures are good. But then also being sensitive about sometimes where it may be a holiday, but it is um, so I like Veterans Day or Memorial Day, like explaining to her those things where it's not a happy occasion, kind of. Cause she's like happy, you know, happy this and happy that. No, wait, babe, let me explain that to you. So just really uh, teaching them the differences. She's just a, a ball of joy. She, yeah, she everything makes her happy. Mm-hmm. So, which you know, which is great. I don't want y'all to think like, oh, she teaching that. But yeah, I just want her to understand the importance of each holiday that we celebrate, and then which ones sometimes she may see people like sad about. She so. finds positivity. Yeah, she does. She, she, she's definitely a daddy. Um, but we're going to talk about where are your gifts at? Where are your... Oh, and are you maximizing your gifts? Um, when we lead off, mm-hmm. you lead off. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because you don't want to talk about these gifts. What? Matter of fact, let's just have you lead on. Now, I, I, I'm inching more towards that way anyway. Like, y'all see how tight my face is? How many gifts do you think you have? <laughs> okay, let me start like this. Okay, <laughs> let, let, let. remember the parable in the Bible where Jesus talks about the men with gifts? Mm-hmm. How the one guy had X amount of gifts. And then he gave out X amount of gifts to another and X amount of gifts to another. And then the one guy, two guys took their gifts, I believe, and I'm paraphrasing, 
and used uh, max, their yeah, gift and max my, and, and came back with more. Right, they doubled doubled the amount. Yeah, and then the one guy took his gift and buried it. He buried it. Right, and then when he came back, I believe the master took his gifts, and I believe he gave it to the other people. Right. Hold on. Uh, Wait a minute. And, and I'm paraphrasing. Um, I recently dove into that actual um story, and and and, and when I oh, we just was listening that. to it, the town. Ta- okay, there it is. Matthew twenty five. Sorry, I was just that, pulling it up. When when I was listening to it, um, there it is. It made me think because I'm really, really, really keen on people using their gifts. And, you know, when the Bible says your gift will make room for you. And I always think that a lot of people are in a boxed up area because they're not using the full potential of their gift. And I always think like, how many of us are burying our gifts because Mm -hmm. we're scared to use it. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to my first question. So, um, how many gifts <laughs> do you think you have? I just want to uh, clarify to you that was Matthew twenty five, and it starts with um, Matthew. It's t- Matthew twenty five fourteen through uh, fourteen through thirty is uh, huh? Time telling them. To oh yeah. That. Um, and so that is uh, it's. The, I'm looking at the Amplified version, and it's called Parable of Talents. Um, and so I might yeah, put that somewhere in here. And he did take, um, he actually, the one that kept his gifts, um, I'm looking for, see, I just had it. Oh, he called him, <laughs> you wicked, lazy servant. You yeah. knew that I reap the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents. Uh, so they took it. Yeah. So he took it. And <laughs> so how many times? Ta- I don't know. That's what's up. I'm d- OK. So. <sighs> That's her mama's face. Y'all. It is. All right. So. When it comes down to what I could do, I'll say I underestimate what I can do sometimes. So you're not maximizing it? No, probably not everything that I have. You got to think that's what the dude did. Yeah, I'm probably not maximizing on everything. But this is what I will say, too. Some things I was not aware of that I can do. I just knew that I liked things, but I had never executed on my own or delve into it on my own to Mm. know that oh this is something that you're good at doing does that make sense Mm -hmm. so like i knew growing up i knew there were different things i knew i can write like i i love writing i knew poetry was my thing so that started at a young age i knew that i could read and decipher um or break down and comprehend what uh (laughs) i sort of (laughs) Thanks. And comprehend what I read. So I knew I had those type of abilities and talents. I knew that the way I processed was different than some of my classmates or my counterparts growing up. And then as I got older, like I knew I was good at doing hair. So like no matter if my hair was short, long, like those were just kind of some things I just kind of picked up on. Um, Then it became cooking. And then now as an adult, I learned that, or actually in high school, my senior year in high school, I learned that I had the ability to be able to to take in information and then teach it to somebody else and break it all the way down. So that was the teaching thing or the helping people to understand and grasp thing. That was one of my main things. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, when you do that career survey, they go, oh yeah, you're built, you know, a helper or whatever they called it back then. But um, those were a few that I already knew. And so those I acted on because I knew of them. But recently, things like... um, Doing the podcast? Doing the podcast. Like, this was not... I know I I like to talk and I like to meet new people. Um, I like people. I met 
I met two new people. I met two. I, they're not friends because I didn't meet them like that. But I did meet two new people this morning. Um, but I knew I liked to talk to people and just to kind of interact with people. Um, I don't really like big old gatherings of people. I like smaller groups. Um, which is weird because I'm a teacher, but I prefer smaller groups when I'm doing like social interactions. Um, and I like to gain knowledge and then share the knowledge that I have. Um, so podcasting was something that I, I was not aware that, um, I am decent at. I don't think a lot of people are. And I think that's where, that's where we suffer at. Um, for me, I try to use all my gifts. I went done listening my gifts, man. But use a uh, taking the wrong route, so I figure I use my gift <laughs> to <laughs> you, hey, Grandma is listening to this. Grandma might not be listening to this one, and this is why. She be wild sometimes. She be like, we be too long. She can't, you can't listen to us for a long time. I get it. So uh, what you're trying uh, to say is I'm just long-winded. <sighs> Could be one of your gifts. I'm just detail-oriented. Which is nothing wrong with that. You um, know? But we're podcasting and I have to cut it short. I get it. Thank you. But with the many talents and the many gifts that we have, we should be maximizing them all, some way, somehow. You a person right. who uh, who is detailed, very detailed, who need details, won't do things unless you have details. <laughs> details do tell for you. Stop. So, <laughs> um, do tell by the detail. Exactly. <laughs> so the thing for me is. I'm talented in so many different ways, um, from music to. Now you have a lot of talents, a whole heap of. Yeah, you got I, a whole I'm slew. Not, I'm not even gonna go through the. Yeah. The whole thing. See, I was uh, brainstorming out loud uh, of what. There's no, there's no need for me to even brainstorm. We'll be here for two hours talking about a long time. all the stuff that I do. Long, long time. But I maximize in them somehow. Some. Somehow, like yeah. they all go hand in hand. A lot of times, I your I things are intertwined for some reason. Yeah, all of your everything that, and that's the thing that I noticed. And I think for when it comes down to how you kind of maneuver through things, it all interlinks. Like you find a way to interlink and interlock and all of that stuff. So that way, it's more of a smooth course for you when it comes down to performing in each one because i think it's a, it, it's my character yeah i think your gifts are basically part of your character and who you are and see me i need everything that's detail so that i keep saying details better details um <laughs> and so i think the difference for me is some of the things that i do is linked together and then some of them are not i think they are you just don't know how they're linked <laughs> Carry on, but and that's why I think like the gifts are linked to our characteristics all the time. If you pay attention to it, and a lot of times we're like, "Well, I didn't know I can do that until you do it." No, this that's not how I don't ever say that. You say hey, that, but can you? Uh, I need you to do this. No, nah, can't change it. Yeah, whatever you want to do, babe. No, nah, okay, I don't like that. That's what you do to me. That's how you. <laughs> like I said, you won't be <laughs> able to know that you can do it until I get you thrown do it. into a lot. Of, I get thrown into a whole lot of stuff. You know because that? you will not do it your own. Like you, you will sit there <sighs> on the same board, <laughs> like, like, like yeah, Mariah playing uh turbo she gonna play one board one right now. she's dead and she want to run that whole <laughs> that board for the i mean she she could run it all day and she likes it that's that's good but what i'm saying is other boards out there but she will run that board and then get mad if you get up and walk away you know yeah and she, she said no way when she's playing no wait a minute can somebody play with but, me please 
I believe that reason why we are miserable, reason why we are going through a lot, mm-hmm. because God gave us these gifts. Right. That's why a lot of times it said he knew you in your mother's womb. Mm-hmm. And he knew what gifts you were going to need to actually go throughout this life. Right. So this might be a short podcast. That's what's up. Grandma, I got you. So <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> um I will impose a question. Mm-hmm. The question is how often do you utilize your gift? Not your main one, because we know I do that one every day. Well, 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 um, what you do, you know. You you practice on that day. Every day. Every day. Know. Um, but the ones that's sitting up underground, buried. I don't use them daily. Bless your heart. Um, some things I find it okay. So I'll use I'll use the 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 logo making or logo design, uh, graphic design to be politically correct. Uh-huh. Um, so I find some way to, um utilize designing something as far as graphics at least once or twice a week and that may be working on something and then going in and going in and editing and revising until it looks like what i want it to look like Mm -hmm. so i've learned to incorporate the graphic design into my regular job um some other things that i found that i'm good at i have not utilized those things um and it's just learning how to maximize our time maximize my time i'll say that um because i think a lot for sometimes i feel like there's so much that i probably do know how to do but the time my time allotment for interferes with what i get done and what i don't get done Mm -hmm. Um, so that was one, that's one thing that I, I realized too, like I have the things to be able to practice and increase talents, but prioritizing time and setting, setting aside the time to intentionally do it. So I think if we don't, if we have these gifts and talents and we know that they exist, if we don't set aside the actual time to, um, you know, the time to get them done. Or the time to to intention be intentional about it, mm-hmm. then it they they like they lie dormant. Yeah. Um. And then I mean, as we saw in that parable, like when I think about it, because I remember we you did a the illustration thing. Remember, we watched it on TV of that parable. Remember? Mm, yeah. So that, oh, that was with the one guy too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we watched that parable, that was good. for me, I was like, "Ooh, like I don't want what I ha- I don't want to lose the talents that I've been given because I'm not maximizing on them." Mm-hmm. And even though I'm, you're, you're aiding me in helping me, helping me identify things that I probably did not know that I had or I'm could trying. do. I'm trying. Um, and so I also have to be willing to do that. If y'all see why I'm looking over at my fish, uh, <laughs> they're playing and then using oh. their gifts right about now. But that's the one thing that we also have to have. We have to have people that are in our corner to help us Push um, enhance our gifts. Um, so I'm delving into the crafting side to see what it is that is my niche and my talent. Like, it, to what extent, I guess. I believe you have to explore yourself. Yeah. So I think, I think watching my daughter's. And watching all my kids, those when they're young, they are like they do adamant <laughs> about exploring like everything, everything, and they have questions about everything. Mm-hmm. And I, I, all my prayers for them to always keep that, keep that uh, wanting to know things, mm-hmm. you know, because they, they want have everything. A, they're very eager when it comes to learning, yeah, and very inquisitive. Meaning they ask, they ask a lot of questions and they want to know how things work. They want to know yeah. why. So 
But I, I, I want them to keep that. Yeah. Because I believe we as adults, we lost that. Yeah. And as the Bible says, we, we suffer for a lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, I think that's that's exactly why we suffer. Because, number one, we don't want to put in the time to learn. Right. Number two, we don't want to put... In the investment, I was just I was thinking that, <laughs> and what it take right to to get this thing done. Yeah, we don't want to invest in ourselves, and we, which is crazy because right. we will invest in so many different other things, mm-hmm. but ourselves. Yeah, and I think I'm more so, and and the reason why I'm focused now is because I'm more so focused on the investment of my family. Right, and this has been for us too, um, a year of investing. Uh, um, because you invested on, uh, like a hey, um, you invested in a lot of, <laughs> invested in a lot of things so that we, we are able to do this podcast and make it, um, what it is. And then you also taught me that I should be investing in the different things that I need to do those, uh, things that I need to do. That's important. So. I mean, I and I mean, my stuff didn't cost as much, but some things it's funny, though, that I wanted and then like I was blessed with um, a cricket, um, the vinyl cutter. I, I've been secretly wanting one for ooh, for a couple of years now because I played with one at school and I was like, oh, I like this. I went my having one, but just it was like, mm, am I going to? Do I really want to spend that kind of money? Do we even have that kind of money to spend? So, um, okay, yeah, he's like, yeah, we do. Um, but at that time when I was looking, we did not. I'll put it that way. We did not. We probably had it, but I just was not going to put it on that. And so I was like, Lord, I really want one. So I w- was secretly looking for one and looking at them and pricing them. And um, I was actually blessed with one that has been barely used. I know this this, this season uh, has been crazy. Yeah. And then I was given a whole tub. I was told not to buy vinyl. Um, and my my wonderful um, co-teacher was like, here, here's some vinyl. Use all of this up before you go and buy, mm. before you go and buy some more. So just helping me to find things, um, you know, to enhance myself. Things did, that I've and, always and wanted to do. And that has really made Christmas difficult. Because everything I said I wanted to buy you. I had. Somebody purchased <laughs> it or... Basically, somebody purchased it. Yeah, somebody so, purchased it, or somebody had it, and was like, "If she doesn't Here. get nothing from me, hey, yeah, it's already, I'm, I'm it's fine." Already. But Be- you know, I get gifts all throughout the yeah. year. So, know. and that was, and that's another thing, guys, that we don't spend a lot of time on, like when we give gifts, when we give the physical or the material gift. That gift that we usually give each other is to enhance our talents that we have, like our gifts and talents that we have. So anything that I buy him is going to be either techie related, gaming related, cutting hair, like those things that he he does. So it's not going to be something random where I know he's not going to use it. Like that's the type of thing we. It has to be an investment. Yeah. So we give intentionally to help enhance what our talents are we try not to buy liabilities yeah so we buy things that are asset Mm -hmm. um and even for the even for the girls um we've paid attention to the things that they like and the gift buying and or when well the stuff people buying because we ain't really bought what we wanted to buy yet but it's still all assets it's things that they can use because it's things that they like they are so interested in a lot of different things so everything that they're interested in like it's all geared toward that. They go bring it. So to yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just one of those things where um, our family is focusing more on what can we do to enhance each other, what can we do to enhance um, our own gifts, and then also pour that into our children. Yeah. Um, I and, think that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Because, like you said, as adults, we do 
um, I took over. I'm sorry. Um, as adults, we do fail to um, when we don't explore our own gifts and talents and letting them fall by the wayside. That rolls over to our children then it's hard to help them identify so we, we never tell yeah them. because we don't want to identify so uh, one thing where we've broken the cycle or the generational cycle is that we have not told our children that they cannot do something we have informed them yes you could try this i don't believe in yeah the you word don't re- believe in the word camp like the word camp. but we just tell them okay if this doesn't work out what is your alternate route that's how we present it to them because um as as he mentioned our children are all <laughs> they are multi-talented full even at the age they're at right now so yeah. we you know we pride them on good job you could do this this is you know what's important what's important yeah this is what's important that mm-hmm. type of thing like, and it's starting with you know it well it started with Araya way before then I always tell people um, because if if you don't pour it to them society things, will <laughs> I'm trying to tell you society will and society it won't will pour a whole will eat different them alive into them yeah that it will bite you in the butt and you wish you would have poured it into them yeah so so with the gift thing um to wrap it up put a bowl in this thing <laughs> I was thinking I was uh, like ah you know, we ain't got no gap. What? Off the top, it's in the back. Um, <laughs> gifts right here, right? Yeah, right there, right, right there, right. No, wait, right there. Yeah, right, right there. there. But <laughs> to put a bow on this thing, listen. For those that have gifts, that have talents, I encourage you to number one, spend time in these mm-hmm. gifts. Spend mm-hmm. at least three to four hours a day with these gifts, honing in, practicing, just pushing it to the mm-hmm. limit. Um, because I said your gifts will make room for you. Mm-hmm. And what I do now, visually, I tell my gifts where they want to go. My my gift have purpose now. Mm-hmm. Like this gift will open up the door for me to fund my whole family. This gift right here. Will will make it make it so that me and my family can travel. Mm-hmm. This gift right here will be so big to the point where I can impact communities. Mm-hmm. Did like I, I I give destinations so that my gifts can go here. Then I put a price value on it. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't put a price value on your gift, then you will basically just be giving them out. Right. And. It'd be cheap. Mm-hmm. So if you think your gift is worth two dollars, guess what? That's Somebody gonna try to get it for free mm-hmm. because life is about bargains, right? Now, people always ask me as far as with, we with my editing and different other stuff. It ain't cheap. It's not because the hours and the labors that put into it, they cut like like <laughs> is it? It's a different type of creativity. Mm-hmm. So I tell you now. To invest in yourself, mm-hmm. invest in your gift. Your gift will make room for you. So, when it comes to Christmas, everything like that, be more mindful of what your gift and what your talent is. Right. And be more intentional about what you're purchasing and asking yourself, yeah. um, you know, is it an asset? Is it something that you and your family can use and benefit from? Or is it a liability? Meaning, you know what? We really don't need this thing right now. And it's just going to go to waste. And that is something that we, um, like I said, we've definitely had to do this year. Yeah. Um, so don't hesitate to um, find someone to help you to identify what your strengths may be because sometimes what you are very strong in or different areas you're strong in that can actually be a gift um, depending on what it is that you're doing and then um, always sit and have your quiet time and ask the Lord to reveal to you what it is that he has already instilled in you from birth that you need to start operating in and be able to bring that forth Um, and a lot of times like 
I know a lot of people don't think patience is a oh, gift, yeah. but patience is a gift. <sighs> yeah, because everybody don't have that. You know, um, l- being a person who loves everybody, that's a gift. It is. Being a caregiver, that's a gift. Like these things right here are what we call gifts. Yeah. And everybody, so, and everybody does not have or operate in the same thing. So yeah. you just different. have to be mindful not to, um, don't allow jealousy to creep in. Don't allow yourself to um, go into the comparison road oh, trip. Um, so those are just some things. Don't be envious. These are just some things that, you know, to watch out. His his things that are the things that he does. Oh, my goodness. I'm not jealous at all because I know the labor that goes into it. And then I'm pretty sure there are some things that I do um, and, and I'm good at doing and he might say, okay, hats off to my wife because my wife can do it. And there's some times where he has to lean on me and then I have to lean on him. So even as a husband and a wife team, we have to lean on each other for whatever gift purpose that is. So I can make something as far as graphics and then I'm like, okay, babe, what should I do? Or he may start the graphic out and he's like, okay, you put the finishing touches. So we also like work together when it comes to what we're good at. And certain things that I'm just trying to retire from <laughs> <laughs> so that I can do other things. Yeah. Like me, like it's like, I, I've done this for so long. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me teach somebody else how to do this. So then I can move on about, the, you know, to yeah. do something else. You got, you got to be able to teach somebody too. But you didn't teach me. I kind of like just fell right into it, which is good. Yeah. And so that was just something and it's something that and the crazy part is as things are revealed to you as far as what you're supposed to be doing, it feels natural and you literally fall in love with it. Podcasting, it is something that like he was like, we podcasting. I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm down. He took a nap. I snoozed, put the girls down that way. When it was time to roll, we were ready. Um, Graphics. If he asks for something, say, hey, we need this. So it's just automatically something that I love and I gravitate to. So um, yeah, I took a nap because uh, I know I'm going to have to edit this and get it up. Yeah. Before 3 a.m. Before 3 a.m. So. <laughs> but we want to really say that in this season, please make sure that um, it is not about the materialistic gift. It is the gift that has been given to you um, or the talents that mm-hmm. have been given to you. Um Utilize them um, and seek out quiet time so that you can really, truly um, process what it is that you are supposed to be doing and what you um, have been given. Because you do not want to be like the uh, man in the parable and call lazy and then have them taken from you. Give it to somebody else. Yeah, and give it to somebody else. So um, in this season of giving, we really want to um, let y'all know that one material that you should be keeping is your mask. Yes. The numbers are crazy. So please protect yourself while you're out there. Mask. Mask up. See? Definitely. Keep your mask. Hand sanitizer. uh, We're we're, we're not. we're, (laughs) We're far from being in the clear. Yeah, we know we're not nowhere in the clear right now. So, like we always say about this time, keep God first and the rest will be added. Hey, wait. It's Christmas Eve. So, Merry Christmas Eve. I don't know what else coming because she didn't say the whole keep God first thing. Happy Christmas Eve and happy Christmas. Matter of fact, it's Merry Christmas. You can't be happy? Merry. Have yourself Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Merry New Year. (laughs) Till Christmas. Don't you cut me off. Here we are.